Folks, please say hello to a show favourite, which is David Scott of Northern Exposure. Good evening hello, to Alistair. you, David. Hello, Alistair. How are you tonight? Very well. Very well, thank you. Very impressed with your dazzling new studio there. Um, Do you like the lights? The, light, the light's quite cool. And, yes. um, and I managed to get red, white and blue on just for your show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Good. I enjoyed your, your quote from Churchill there. Um, a, he, he was absolutely right on the whole brevity. Uh, I, I'm an engineer. I do a lot of technical reports. They all start with a one-page executive summary and it's bullet points. And if you can't reduce it to that, you haven't thought it through. So he was absolutely right. And all these linked to Scotland. Um, he was once criticised of having no connection to Scotland. And he said to the person, yeah, nothing apart from my constituency, my regiment and my wife. <laughs> Absolutely. Which I thought was quite a good put down. Yes, yes. Well, well, I was amazed because um, when I found out that he had been an MP, I mean, he had, a, he had a massive, a massive career. He was born at that time in history when basically everything important that happened, he was the age for it, as it were. And I never knew that he had been the MP for Dundee and not just like for a term for, you know, three, four years, but for 14 years. I mean... Most people just retire after that. Do, do you happen to know who unseated him? I do, because I did look into it. Was it um, somebody who was campaigning against the demon drink, basically? It was, it was a temperance candidate. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the first time he stood, he got you know, a derisory you know, a few dozen votes, and he stood again, and he got, he got several hundred votes, and he stood again, and he got several thousand votes, and he stood again, and he won. And it just shows you just what a popular movement, the temperance movement, was in Scotland mm. in the twenties and thirties. Uh, my 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 mother was was born in a in a uh, in a steel town, a steel village in Lanarkshire um, in uh, nineteen nineteen, and in her early life on on Sunday they weren't allowed to play because it was Sunday, um, and they, they were all the kids from the entire village. They all went to the Church of Scotland Sunday School, which was a bit boring. They didn't really like that one. They went to the Mission Sunday School, which they liked because it was jolly and they, they would play games and sing. And they all went to the Band of Hope, right, which was the temperance movement. And all the kids in the entire village went to the Band of Hope and they all swore off the demon drink. And I think to her dying day, my mother still had a view that although she would take a, a sherry at... at at your years, it really wasn't entirely proper. I think it's. I think that stayed with her, a, 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 a view that there was a lot of a lot of potential harm in there, as indeed there is. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah. temperance movement was huge. Yes, absolutely, and uh, a massive a massive social movement throughout throughout the United Kingdom at the time, and yes. no doubt because it it was it was socially destructive. You know, you'd get guys who would be working hard all the week, and then they get the pay, and they'd blow it all by the weekend, and you know that would be very bad for the for the families and so on. Um, it was so it I, was socially destructive, but there was a there was a there was a grassroots campaign against it. When we mm -hmm. look at the drug problem we have in Scotland now, and there is no grassroots campaign against anything. Um, we're looking at the government to do something and. Frankly, that's not going well, um, and the, there isn't there isn't the intellectual work being done to give people other choices. Um, what do you mean by that? The intellectual work being done to give people yeah, well, other choices. Well, the, the the whole purpose of the band of hope is it gave people information. It gave people reasons not to give into the demon drink. It gave people information. It gave it gave it data and an understanding of what the downsides were mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it informed people and it, it gave them reasons to choose other paths um, mm -hmm. and that that was coming from the grassroots and we don't see the equivalent and it's quite striking that we don't see the equivalent although arguably the harm that's been done by drugs now in our country is every bit as bad maybe even worse than, uh, than alcohol a uh, hundred years ago yes yes Yes, interesting points. Interesting points. Um, anyway, to talk more um, positively about things that have been happening. Um, well, firstly, 
you have got this new studio, Northern Exposure. Would you, would you like to s speak a f couple of minutes or a few minutes on your on this new project that you're working on? Yeah, so we've got um, basically three strands to, no, four strands, three at the moment, shortly to be four strands to this. Uh, firstly, I'm publishing uh, written material on Substack. Uh, Substack, I'm only now on it for, I think, three weeks or so. It's a really nice platform. It works awfully well. There's a big audience engagement. Uh, I've, I've been very, very impressed with it. Uh, so I'm publishing written material on Substack, and that's uh, 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 digging deeper. Ne at, at Substack is the uh, is the address. If you just, if you go into digging deeper, David Scott, you'll you'll find it. Um, and we've looked so far at some of the history of how the state has interacted with families, and uh, some of the history of uh, the NHS and eugenics, uh, amongst other things, uh, uh, both from a Scottish perspective. Uh, so that's written material there, and I've started two video uh, platforms. Uh, one is a, a, a review and an analysis um, program. It's called Notes from the Edge. Uh, the first, the introductory one of those is up, and that will be a regular series that will go on for, I hope, uh, a, a long time. And the other one is an interview series called Necessarily So, and this is to uh, get people in who have got something important to say with um, with information that, that, that can change uh, a person's worldview, allow them to see the world differently, or that exposes things that most people accept as, as the truth that, that just isn't so, that just isn't backed up by the evidence. So it's, it's, this is the type of people that we'll be interviewing. Uh, episode one of that is also up, and I started with uh, uh, Kevin Ryan, who's a 9-11 whistleblower, and... I started there because so many people who see things differently started when uh, they realised that the story of 9-11 uh, was full of holes and did not make a coherent sense. And they started looking into that. So that was a good starting point for our interview series. Well, talk about a starting point. That's going straight into the, to the, to the deep end on that particular subject. So if that's what you started with, who knows what's going to be coming next because that's certainly a very interesting yeah. a very interesting field i'll tell you something and i i i i got i thought you might mention that so i lined up a couple of pictures that we'll put up in a second um i was in new york back in 1985 and i had the privilege of climbing up world trade center tower 2 to the i didn't climb up it as such i got carried up by a lift but I uh, to the viewing platform, and I took a photograph. I was just snapping photographs, looking down, and would you believe I actually snapped World Trade Center Seven in construction? And we'll put up um, the first photograph of that here. Now that's the view looking down from World WTC Two, looking down at WTC Seven. See it being constructed there. Yes. Yes. And, yes, uh, because w WTC seven looks <clears throat> looks quite diminutive next to next to the, the the twin towers, but of course it's a huge building in its own right. Absolutely, and a, a close up on that is is that. So that's what that's what it looked like inside, and I've never s seen that photograph or photographs like it in any of the documentation on this particular matter. So that's just, I just thought I'd put that up there just for interest. Okay, so that's video programs um, and, and the, on, the one, on YouTube yes, that you're doing. And, and, and the one that I, it's on YouTube, and I will get it on other platforms just in case YouTube gets sticky, but uh, it's on YouTube at the moment. And um, the one other uh, program I'm hoping to get launched sometime next month is a once a week, probably Sunday, uh, news review, uh, you know, what the papers say, and um, we might even time it to uh, overlap with the BBC's version of uh, reviewing the news of the week. So, oh, uh, well, well, and, and that, that, will have, that will have guests, and so I'll have two or three people joining me every week. So that's, that's Okay, well, good luck with all of that work. You've certainly cut you certainly got your work cut out for you. You've cut your work out for yourself, whatever the expression is, 
So I'm sure these will be extremely interesting programs. And basically, go to youtube.com and search for David Scott Northern Exposure, or it's also there at Northern Exposure 9510 is the full address for people who want to subscribe to you. And we'd certainly encourage people to do that. Now, um, what about the good news? As they say, um, you mentioned that there's one or two things that have been happening worldwide that you'd like to elaborate upon. Yeah, um, there's, it's, it's been a very it's been a very positive start to the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been things that have not been going well, but there have been uh, many things that have gone in a, in a very interesting and positive direction. Now, firstly... I thought we should start with Humza announcing that he's not a nationalist. Did you catch that one? Yes, I, I didn't know what to make of that. What did you make of it? Well, this is Humza being not the, not the sharpest knife in the box, because this is, of course, true. The, the, the SNP and Humza, the policy is entirely anti-nationalist. It's globalist, it's communist, mm. it's far left, it's internationalist. It is not nationalist. Now, Nicola did admit this as well. But, of course, they play on the nationalist card and they get votes based on the nationalist card. So they essentially get votes by deception. I would say probably um, the majority, maybe two-thirds of the votes they get, they get largely by deception. Now, if you're getting two-thirds of your votes by deception, it's not really very clever to tell everybody about it. And, and that's what Hamza has done. So um, on top of other issues uh, to do with his brother-in-law, uh, it's not been a great start for the SNP to 2024. Um, but I thought that was, it, it was interesting that he had, that he made that admission. And I don't, I don't think it was very wise. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the next bit of good news actually came in, um, in three sections. And this, this all came from mm -hmm. courts in England. I think it is quite striking that it's coming from courts in England, which are better and stronger defenders of liberty than the courts in Scotland, to the latter's shame, I would suggest. Um, and these were all cases where people had been hounded by the state over essentially wrong think. They said the wrong thing, they had the wrong opinions, and they came after their jobs. The first one I've got here is Rachel Mead. Um, she uh, was a social worker, was a social worker in England. And there was a complaint made. This is how it always starts. And activists see something they don't like and they decide to come after your job. So there's a complaint made about her Facebook posts. Uh, they were said to be discriminatory in nature and an investigation was started. She was suspended on uh, charges of gross misconduct, which is, of course, an instant sacking offence. Um and the claim was the social media posts were transphobic. Um, the council investigation reported that holding discriminatory beliefs is of significant concern given her position of trust as a social worker. Right, So she was being told she could not think what she was thinking. And of course, what she was thinking, if you go back only 25 years, was entirely standard and everyone believed it in the entire country. So this is about how the left force and coerce and bully people into pretending to believe something else. So it all went to court. Um, and the courts found, found you know, in, it totally in her favour. Um, they said they don't consider the respondent struck a fair balance between the claimant's right to freedom of expression and the interests of those who perceive may be offended. They said freedom of speech invariably will involve the right to, on occasion, cause offence to some people. And it's clear this does not preclude an individual's ability to express such views. And it said the continuation of a dis disciplinary process from November 21 onwards constituted harassment. Right? So they absolutely slated the, the, the officials. And for everyone, including, including you and I, Alistair, who wants to speak honestly and openly about what they believe, this is an enormous victory. Okay. Mead's solicitor said the judgment sounds an alarm for all regulators and all employers of regulated professionals. They must not let their processes be weaponized by activists 
bent on silencing the debate on freedom of speech. This case was on gender, but it applies across the board. Now, um, you know all about activists trying to <laughs> silence the debate because you've had to put up with it for years. So I think that's enormously good news. So yes. we had here The Guardian. The Guardian had to report on this. Um, Westminster City Council found to have discriminated against Rachel Mead. So she was charged with withholding discriminatory views and actually who was discriminating? It was her employer and regulator who were discriminating. So Well, that's a, that's a very unusual to... ruling. Um, and who was it that made the ruling uh, job? Uh... Uh, it's a tribunal. tribunal so yeah. It'd be an employment tribunal. Right. Well, that's 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 definitely uh, a step in the right direction. Yeah. The, the, we always go one step forward, one step back, because the, you know there's somebody convicted today of putting up stickers under the so-called hate speech laws, and they were anti-immigration stickers, and they weren't actually um, nasty to anybody. They were just pointing out, you know, Britain's going to be a whites are going to be a minority allegedly by twenty. 66 or whenever it was and he got done for for it uh and he's this is this is, this facing, is insane he's facing insane. Uh, up to seven years but he hasn't been convicted he hasn't this has been sentenced yet until march hopefully he'll get a suspended sentence but um it is it is insane but there's always within that insanity there's also sparks of hope such as the one that you've just mentioned about the woman at the tribunal now, being I'll give you I'll give you another off. I'll give you another two quick ones but before yeah. I do do you remember John Swinney's uh, someone was someone posted in Perth on lamp posts little stickers saying it's okay to be white and, yes, and Swinney Swinney went public that this was appalling <laughs> uh, and and the, the most terrible thing he'd ever seen you know and you know really John is it's not okay to be white okay mm, uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting. That's an interesting position, and it shows their complete lack of intellectual honesty. It shows a complete lack of any sort of clarity of thought. And what they're doing is trying to um, coerce and browbeat people. And I mm. hope the case which you just described that very shortly will get will get those cases being overturned as well, because I think that's utterly nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Two other cases. This is in one week. Uh, open University academic Professor Joe Phoenix, who was compared with the racist uncle at the Christmas table when she was um, sacked from the Open University because she has gender critical beliefs. Right? She's uh, a, a lesbian. She's probably far left. She's probably not someone that politically I would identify with, but, you know, she's she was hounded out of her position because she didn't agree with this nonsense over gender. She has also won her tribunal case. Okay. And Mayor uh, Forstater, Forstater um, has also won a case. Uh, she was di discriminated against over gender critical beliefs. Um, she lost a job in the think tank, think tank after tweeting that transgender women could not change the biological, biological sex. I mean, simple statements of fact. She's won a claim that she's unfairly discriminated against because of her beliefs. So I don't see how we can be supporting all of these women um, over gender and still locking people up because they have views over nationality that are um, simply expressing a view that's not in accordance with The Guardian. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I I agree, and I think that things are beginning to change, especially with um, other platforms, freedom of speech platforms, even on Twitter, for example, yeah. under Elon Musk. Um, there's not the feeling anymore that you have to walk on eggshells. Obviously, you always have to be careful just normally anyway, um, but the sort of verboten topics of the past or even points of view are are much more casually mentioned now without any um 
uh, blowback as it as well, it were so i think things are changing i, I feel that when yeah. people are allowed free speech platforms then everything gets back to normal again and finds a finds a better balance um and that's hopefully maybe where we're moving certainly the issue of immigration is now come firmly into the mainstream and rather than being a kind of third rail that no one could touch in case it eliminated their career it's now being discussed openly in the telegraph and elsewhere so a whole series of subjects that simply weren't being examined are now starting to be examined and are going to be huge um, mm. the, the I, I saw your tweet earlier today about the lack of border controls and i think that's a viewpoint that that very many i'm sure the majority of of, of people in the country now share and that that move will not that genie will not go back in the bottle um that move will be permanent and it will form a, a big part in the next election and the one after that so um it it will it will now have to be debated yes. now the other the other big win which was only yesterday i think was canada right mm -hmm. so the the canada truckers protest was closed down uh, using quite uh, uh, brutal suppression suppression techniques, much of it financial, by mm. Trudeau's government. Well, a Canadian court has ruled, yes, Tuesday, it was yesterday, um, that the use of the federal law um, against the truckers was unreasonable and illegal. Um, they said uh, the use of the Emergencies Act does not bear the hallmarks of reasonableness, justification, transparency and intelligibility. And the federal court justice Richard Mosley, interesting name, uh, I conclude that there was no national emergency justifying the invocation of the Emergencies Act, and the decision to do so was therefore unreasonable and ultra virus, uh, which means, of course, beyond the scope of the law. So they broke the law, they contravened the Constitution, and the truckers were right. Now, that's only just happened. Excellent. Um, there, the, the Canadian government's going to appeal, and hopefully that's laughed out of court as well. And I would like to see the many, many financial claims from many truckers now pour into the Canadian government, who will, of course, be liable for all losses, given the fact that they acted unlawfully. This will be, um, hopefully, a long-lasting shellacking for the totalitarian uh, Canadian government. Well, that would be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic if that happened. That uh, that judge, what level of court was that? Um, that was federal. Federal. That was which, federal, yeah. Which, is that equivalent to like their Supreme Court or? The... I wouldn't like to say. My knowledge no. of the Canadian justice system is no. a bit ropey. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's, well, it's, it's, it's reasonably, it's reasonably <clears throat> senior. This yes. is not something that can be ignored. No, 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 it's absolutely excellent news and it sets people, it, it starts to put things right. Um, yeah. So that's excellent because that was a wake up call to, to so many people in the Anglosphere world that, that, you're, that the government of an, an Anglosphere country could literally shut down your bank accounts um, yeah. when that happened as well. It was just, just uh, horrifying actually absolutely horrifying uh, to, to discover and, and the, yes and the fact that it was a move against liberty it was a move against people expressing themselves mm, that as and well obviously it, yeah. it it was it was deeply totalitarian and we saw it in australia and we saw it here we've had people here have the bank accounts removed uh people you know and i know have had the bank accounts removed uh simply for saying the wrong thing um we've got um uh, lawrence uh, Lawrence Fox now can't get a mortgage in, uh, to buy a house in the UK mm -hmm. because he spoke up against left-wing politics. I, and that's something that to this day makes me look on the on the, the the main political parties as like almost enemies of the people in a way because if I mean the first thing that Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer should do is is say, look we are going to pass a law that guarantees every British citizen the right to have a bank account. And I'm told that we used to have this ability via the post office, 
uh, was was somehow able to set up bank accounts for people. But that should be, uh, if you're a British citizen, you should never be denied the ability to bank, uh, especially considering we're moving into the digital age. It's we're at, we're in the digital age of money. So, um, th th but the fact that this is not a concern for any political major political party that in itself speaks volumes about what an earth is going on and what on earth is their attitude towards the freedom of their own citizens this is a very good point the the political parties are a very similar um and they're very there are a lot of huge issues out there like there are really significant and there's there's barely a single politician who's mm. able to string a coherent sentence together to actually highlight the, the issues that really matter. Yes. Uh, and there's certainly no leadership. What we've got is it's the bland leading the bland. It's very mushy. Um, it's it's ill-defined and it's heading down paths that no one wants and that haven't even been discussed. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Dan Daniel Thomas here comes in and says, doesn't the truckers ruling blow out the water, the reasons and justifications for lockdowns all over the world? That's um, It certainly begins to question it, I would say. Um, Christopher points out the cancel culture is rife across universities and that diversity is another trope that needs to be challenged and dismantled. Um Diversity, so, inclusion, and equity all equity, need to that, be challenged. Well, that's the one. Particularly the last one. Um, the DIE D or the DIE agenda. Yes. We're yes. getting to the top of the hour here, David. So what I'd like to do is just remind everybody that you can be found at X, or Twitter, which is now x.com forward slash Albion underscore Rover. And you're also on Substack at Digging Deeper N E, all one word, at Substack.com. And if people want to find you on YouTube, you're at YouTube.com forward slash at Northern Exposure 9510, or simply search for David Scott and Northern Exposure and they'll get to your ever-growing uh, library of materials. And I noticed you're doing well already on Substack. You've got at least 200 um, subscribers, which is yes, very good, it, considering it, you've it, only been on for a week or two. Yeah, it passed 250 the other day, and that's in, Fantastic. Less, than, that's in less than three weeks. Uh, I'm about 5,000 views on the material I've put up in Substack <clears> in those three weeks, which is way beyond what I was expecting. Uh, the YouTube channel's been more abound for a long time, but is is has quite a lot of followers. It's got nearly 10,000, and that's now picking up further as well. So it's early days. It's only the first couple of weeks, but there will be a lot of content. There should be regular content. should be both video and written material every week. And uh, anyone who wants to comment on it, please do so. And if you want to comment directly, it's uh, northern underscore exposure at protonmail.com. It's my email. Drop me a line if you um, agree, disagree, if you want something looked at, if you simply have a viewpoint that's relevant to something I'm talking about, please let me know because all of this, all of the, the feedback is really valuable and will form part of some of the programming going forward. Fantastic. Well, we wish you the greatest success with your events and we look forward to having you back on on the programme during the course of this year to report on, on your latest investigations and reports. So, David, just to say thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. It's been a real pleasure, Alistair. I hope to have a live event as well uh, later in the year and uh, we'll be inviting you to that if you can come along and be part of that. Um, Absolutely. More more on that one later. Great stuff. Okay then, David. Good night. Thank you very much.